After five years of torture in prison, he risked to escape from this hell on earth and embarked on a 14,000 kilometer polar escape on his own. During the three years he spent on the run, he experienced snowstorms, conquered mountains and crossed Siberia. Time and time again, he had brushes with death. How did he overcome all these obstacles to survive? Foro was a second lieutenant in the German army, ordered to the Soviet front, just before the end of World War II. He said goodbye to his wife and daughter in a noisy train station. Foro promised his pregnant wife that he would be back for Christmas. Soon after the Germans lost the war, Foro was captured. In a Soviet military tribunal, Foro was sentenced to 25 years of correctional labor for crimes against the partisans. A train full of German prisoners of war is traveling through Siberia in a blizzard. They will be taken to a prison in the northeastern corner of the Soviet Union. On the Arctic Circle, a polar cold, combined with a distance, caused many to freeze or starve to death. After a hellish journey, they finally arrive at the prison. There is no grass here and it's freezing cold. There are no walls or guards, hundreds of kilometers of snow. Anyone who tries to escape will die. The warden is extremely strict, almost cold-blooded. No prisoners were allowed to hide anything, or they would be stripped naked and frowning to death in the blizzard. Those who survived worked as laborers in the mines. Here, lives were as fragile as ants, and mine collapses and leaf burials were common. Even if they survived, they died of lead poisoning. The only use for a doctor was to issue death certificates. The men were tortured like the walking dead. Forel often held a picture of his wife and daughter, never losing faith in the idea of escape. While repairing a machine, Forel escaped on a conveyor belt. He was caught quickly because he was unprepared. The warden locked him in an open sewer. The freezing rain washed him day and night. At the end of his punishment, Foro miraculously survived. Foro's escape led to the other prisoners being punished with a five-day fest. Hunger caused them to raise their hated clubs and beat Foro mercilessly. Foro was nearly killed by his fellow prisoners when he didn't freeze to death. Saved by a German medic, Foro survived. The first thing he did when he woke up was to grab the doctor by the collar and scream over and over again, I want to go home. Foro's strength and determination impressed the doctor. In fact, the doctor had already prepared an escape plan. However, the doctor had just learned it, that he had cancer and couldn't afford to go on the run for long. So, he gave Foral a chance to live. One stormy night, with the doctor's help, Foral managed to escape from the prison where he had spent five years. By the time the warden found out, the doctor had died from an injection to keep the secret. Foral walked alone in the endless snowy plains. The loneliness and cold corrupted him. He even hallucinated Soviet soldiers chasing him on sleds. Foral didn't know how many days he had traveled to the northernmost point of the earth. Here he saw the beautiful Aurora Borealis for the first time, but soon the food he brought with him ran out. Faced with a snowy wilderness where nothing grew, Foral fell to his knees in despair. All he could do was pray for God's mercy and wait for death. Good fortune always comes to those with a strong will. When Foral awoke, he found a seal lying not far away. Trembling with emotion, Foral drew his pistol. He fired three shots in quick succession before hitting his target. Then he slid open the seal's belly and eased his frouncing feet into its warm body. Foral filled his stomach and continued on his way. Foral is exhausted from walking the snowy plains all day long, seeing nothing but snow. But then a miracle occurs. A small tree, a symbol of hope and life, suddenly appeared ahead. He stood firm and straight in the swaying wind and snow. Foral ran over to the tree and hugged it tightly. On the other side, the warden has been chasing Foral, knowing full well that Foral's willpower was too strong for him to freeze to death. He expanded his search. A few days later, Foral came to a forest lit a fire and prepared to sleep comfortably. Suddenly two gold hunters came into view. Semja and Anastas mean no harm, but have come to tell Foral that a blizzard is approaching and want to take him with them. But Foral was wary and refused them. In the early hours of the morning, the storm arrived as planned. Foral was knocked unconscious by a large tree. Fortunately, Semjan came to his rescue. From then on, the three of them traveled together. Semjan amusingly quipped, You're not far from home, only 10,000 kilometers away. Time flies and it's 1950. The three of them are traveling downstream on a raft. Suddenly, the water ahead of them starts to swell. Semjan falls into the river, hitting his head on the rocks and hanging on for dear life. Foro leaps into the rapids and risks to save Semjan. Anastas took off on his raft alone. The two of them eventually made it back to their place. Semjan suspected that Anastas was scheming to take the gold for himself. He knocked out Foro and shot Anastas dead. Foro wakes up and realizes the danger, but continues on his way in order to get home soon. Semjan, already obsessed with profit, attacked Foro and knocked him off the cliff. When he woke up, a pack of Siberian wolves pounced on him. In his panic, Foro climbed a small tree, just as a branch was about to snap, and he was about to fall into the wolf's jaws. He was saved by a shot. A group of Yakutsk natives transported him back to the camp. 
These simple natives not only treated him but clothed and fed him. Foro also had an affair here. After a brief period of happiness, he set off for home again, taking a hound with him to escape the Soviets. One man and one dog continued south. It was the summer of 1951. The hound suddenly breaks into a lumberyard looking for food. Foro was detained by the boss. After questioning him, the boss soon realized that Foro was full of suspicions. The boss stabilized him and ordered him to go to the police. He was kind enough to tell Foro that a train was going to pass by where he was going. The boss was planning to take him to jail when the time came. Foro was very happy to be on the train after several years of long escapes. As the train approached the station, Foro realized something was wrong. A large group of Soviet troops were waiting ahead. He takes his hounds and escapes, but the warden has been waiting for him for a long time. In the nick of time, the hound pounced on the warden, buying Foro time to escape. Foro spent a period of time stealing food to feed himself. Foro spent months on foot before arriving in Soviet Central Asia. By this time, he was living in rags as a beggar and living off the charity of others. Because of his strange attire, he was soon targeted by a Jew. To this German's surprise, instead of reporting him, the Jew took him home, fed him and cleaned him up. Then he gave Foro a fake passport and passport. Finally, Foro made it to the border between the Soviet Union and Iran. Once it passed through the Iron Gate, he was free of the Soviets forever. Foro pretends to be calm as he hands his passport to the border official. But in reality, his heart is pounding with anxiety. Foro was relieved to hear that he could leave the country. He tries to resist the urge to run, the urge to laugh. But when he reached the middle of the bridge, Foro couldn't believe what he was seeing. Once again, he saw the person he never wanted to meet in his life. Warden Kamenev, Foro looked around and realized there was no way out. He bowed his head in despair. Maybe all his years of hard work would come to nothing. But then the warden suddenly turned and made way. Foro held his breath and moved forward. When it passed the warden, he didn't grab him, but said with a smile, I have defeated you. Maybe the warden was touched by Foro's strength. Or perhaps the warden knew that greater suffering awaited him. As it turned out, Foro was arrested and imprisoned by Iran as a Soviet spy. At Foro's request, the prison authorities brought in his uncle to verify his identity. After years of not seeing him and the torture he'd endured over the years, his uncle didn't recognize him at all. Fortunately, during the photo identification process, a photo Foro had given to his mother for her birthday saved his life. He was reborn after a long and difficult journey. On a stormy night, Foro returned to his beloved wife and daughter. The years of anticipation had left his wife much worse for wear. His lovely daughter had grown into a beautiful teenager. Foro kept his promise. He made it back in time for the Christmas season. Only eight years late, the three of them embraced with smiles and tears. For this moment, Foro felt it was worth enduring all the suffering in the world. As far as My Feet Will Carry Me was released in 2001, this international award-winning film is based on a true story of escape. It's a brutal, frightening and potentially life-threatening escapade. Foro is alone on his long journey home, supported by his strong willpower, his strong sense of belonging to his life and his home. Any distance is only a heart-to-heart -heart distance. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.